Blog Talk Radio. Hello from the other side. Now presenting. Channeling Eric's Hour of Enlightenment. All right. Hello, hello, everybody. This is Elisa. I'm interrupting the music, I know, but I have no patience today. And I want you guys to know that today we have uh, my wonderful spirit guide, 20-year-old uh, son, Eric, with us. And his, oh, freaking dogs. And... um <laughs> Kim is his voice. He channels uh, for him. But we also have Sassy Montress, and I posted a bunch of really funny YouTubes that she uh, uh, that she has on her channel, and you guys have to subscribe to her channel. Sassy Montress, M-A-N-T-R-A-S. Awesome. And she is going to talk to us today about humor. The spiritual power Hi. of humor and the, and, and the human experience? I don't know. You tell us, Sassy. Or also, um, a.k.a. Daniela. Um, I mean, I feel like comedy and humor is something that we haven't really seen in the spiritual community. And for me, it's always been something that's been really healing. It saved my life numerous times. And I think people have this misconception that spirituality, you need to be very serious and you need to be very zen. And I kind of just want to call BS on that because um, that's not always the case. Um, Some people um, use humor um, to heal. And I think it's the best way to heal because nothing raises your vibe like having a good belly laugh. Um, And I think, yeah, and something else that I think is really important, and and this is something I've kind of discovered as I've been more active on Instagram and Facebook is a lot of people have reached out saying, um, I don't feel so alone anymore. Like I don't, this whole crazy awakening, this whole crazy journey doesn't feel as scary or as confusing um, because comedy connects us all, right? Like the best stand-up comedians are ones that make the audience say, oh my God, like that's how I feel. Or oh my yeah, God, I like Ellen that. DeGeneres does that. Ellen DeGeneres does yeah. that. She will take our little human flaws that we all have and make it something funny. Yes, and she magnifies them, right? And that's what oh, comedy oh, is. Yeah. It's taking, it's taking the, it's taking the everyday mundane, and it's stretching it out. Um, so yeah, and I, it was kind of unexpected. It, I just, my whole journey has been okay. I'm really, and I'm, I love comedy. I'm always laughing. I'm always cracking jokes. And then on the other corner, it's I love talking about God, and I love talking about spirituality and I always felt like I had to choose camps I felt like I couldn't be both and then one day I just realized no those are both parts of me so I'm just going to put it out there and mesh those two worlds and the response has been amazing um, oh, and yeah. it's like a breath yeah and people just feel like it's a breath of fresh air and it just it, it, it connects us it just makes this whole journey not so serious and because I personally think God is the biggest comedian ever. He's, he's always throwing jokes in my life. I don't know about y'all. But. Oh God. Yeah. But you know, it's like I, those, the, the spiritual sages that people channel and they start off with welcome, my dear one. Ugh. Yeah. And then Eric yeah. is like, what the fuck is going on peeps? You know, things exactly. Like that. How did you connect with Eric? Oh gosh. I connected. i found Eric I would I kind of want to say you you were a year into the blog I'm not exactly sure but I think it was Mm -hmm. about a year into the blog and at the time I had just um I was filled with fear I I kind of believed like I I didn't believe I was afraid that you know we were all doomed for damnation um because of all these things that I was hearing and it was kind of you know let me save my ass just in case and then I started researching, I started seeking, and everything I found was good, but it just didn't hit me. And mm-hmm. I found the Jesus interview with Jamie and, and Eric on, on YouTube, and it literally felt like I found something I didn't even realize I was looking for. And everything wow. just clicked. And my yeah, that, life that interview went was from, awesome. Yeah, yeah. And my life just went from so fear-based and so worrisome to life's a fucking party even when it's not a party. And exactly. Eric, Eric just put this love in my life, and 
I had a reading with Jamie Butler about a few months after my grandmother died. And mm. this reading was about three years ago. And Eric came through and he was just like, you tell her she's going to, she's going to open up a YouTube channel. And I was like, you are nuts. So like, that is no way going to happen. And here we are. <laughs> that's right. The rest is history, as they say. Yeah. Yeah. So he, Aww. he was a big support for me. And um, honestly, I, I just, I feel like, this wouldn't even be happening without Eric because Eric has, I love Eric because he can be really forceful and really in your face, but then he can switch up and be so soft and so gentle and he knows when to be what with you. And he's so true. changed my life. Yeah. That he's is- changed my life in all ways. And I love so, him so much for that. Do you, do you channel him? Do you think you hear him or have you had any pranks from him or anything like that? Oh yeah. He, I, he does a lot where he kind of messes with my vision. So, like, I won't find, like, I won't see something that I know is there. And then when I go oh, back, God, it's there. Yeah. Oh, that's a big one um, for him. Yeah. And uh, I, like, I'll, I'll hear him. And sometimes I can, you know, I, I know when it's him. Lately, I feel like he hasn't been around as much. Uh, maybe because it's kind of like, oh, she doesn't need me. <laughs> like, she's good now. She's, I'll pop <laughs> in. I kind of feel like, yeah, I kind of feel like that's what's been happening. But, yeah, he's, he's around. <laughs> no, all you have to do is call on and say, "Come on, dude, let's yeah. go out in the back and smoke a joint or oh. whatever." <laughs> no, I, I, I'm always talking to Eric. Yeah. yeah, that's good. So, what other advice do you have for us about humor? How do we bring humor into our lives? I think it's hard to laugh when you're in the muck. I think mm. I, 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 I wouldn't say laugh when you're you know, when life is throwing you all these curveballs, you feel like you're drowning. That's, mm. I mean, I feel like I, I, I can't even do that. Um, but with time, things settle and things don't feel as intense anymore. And I think that's the, the moment where you kind of look at what happened and you find the comedy and you find the joke in it. Um, and, yeah, it's like and that saying, like, too. it's like that saying, like, one day I'm going to look back at this and laugh, you know? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And when we laugh at the shit um it I feel like it kind of makes that energy not fester and not sit there and it kind of lightens it up and it breaks it up so that we can kind of just you know it's 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 healing I think for a lot of people and it's not even just with like the big heavy things that happen to our in in, in our lives there's a lot of frustration that comes with being on a spiritual journey right it's like am I doing this right am I doing that right and a lot of my and a lot of my videos a lot of my and I make a lot of memes um I'm, I'm I'm most active on Instagram and um, a lot of my memes and a lot of my videos are just literally about the day-to-day frustrations um, with being on this path and spiritual awakenings and, and everything to do with the occult and just every little bit. I do a lot of stuff on tarot. I do a lot of stuff, um, you know, on chakras and just everything that you can imagine that someone would be experiencing. Um, I try and tap into that and throw in a little humor in it. And that it's takes the edge off. It's like it, it's like good. a stiff drink for the soul. <laughs> there we go. I kind of like that. No, uh, what about just, just the, would it help? Is you're kind of feeling like your vibration is low to just turn on the TV yeah. and try to watch your, your try to search and, and uh, for and watch your favorite stand up? Yeah. Oh my God. Of course. It's what it's whatever makes you laugh. If I don't make you laugh, then don't watch me. Right? Like that's not what I'm saying. But it's just whatever kind of tickles your heart whatever gives you a chuckle whatever you feel connected to um do that and the thing is it's it's like a muscle right it's the more you're laughing the more you kind of see the world through through that lens um the easier like it is being, to just like cats being afraid of cucumbers that always makes me that <laughs> i love those youtubes cute cat or exactly animal exactly videos, so. well and who I, is your favorite and my, and, that? uh louis ck right now oh my like, god uh, he's my favorite modern too. yeah he's yeah. a bit raw but it's a you know i recommended That's, my one of my sisters watch it and she was very offended i said come on Jeez. Well, that's, i mean i think that's why i love him because i'm no like i don't like the bs and anything um Uh-oh. and i think he just he, he kind of just brings it down to like the rawest like the core of everything and he just yeah, says it like it no is BS. and yeah there's no BS right, with no him, and BS. I love it. <laughs> he is definitely my fave. His, his latest tour even had me a little bit going, oh, my God, what are you doing? But it was amazing. <laughs> that is funny. 
No, and uh, yeah. Amy, what's, it, what's the one's name? Uh, Amy Amy Schumer. She's pretty raw, too. She's kind of funny. Yeah, she, yeah, she's funny. Yeah, I like her. So, so, Eric, what do you think about Daniela, i.e. <laughs> Sassy Montress? He's He's kind of just been talking, like, the whole time. It's so funny because he's just talking and carrying on conversation with you guys as you're talking. So I'm just listening. And um, <laughs> he's kind of, you know, Danielle, when you talk about, you know, how people, when they when they kind of present themselves as like a spiritual person, they, um, this is what Eric says, he's like, you have to remember, you know, in looking at comedy and even expanding past that, he says you have to, people have to remember not to lose their personality in it because they do. They think that they can't have a personality. And Elisa, I think you must have touched on this because he's pointing to you. Um like people that are in a spiritual awakening or have been awakened for some time, whatever, um, they're human too. They have emotions, they have feelings and expressions. So mm-hmm. you can't expect them to be, this is what he says, fucking zen all the time. If if yep. they're a person, if they're human, they're not going to be just... I know, I, um, I, get to- I get totally bitch slapped. Anytime I put a, a comment about politics, it's like, oh, that's so unspiritual of you, Elisa. It's like, okay, mm. I'm a human being. I have a right to have my opinions. Have you ever yeah, heard of J.P. Saying, like, you can't, you can't get swallowed up in that to where yeah. you lose your personality because that's what people think you're supposed to do. Or it's like this. It's not even like a conscious thought or effort, though. He's like, it's very, sub, it's a subconscious behavior where people go into like this. Uh, <laughs> that's random. <laughs> Um, he's like, people go into this, like, really dry, bland perspective or aspect of themselves. And he's, mm-hmm. he literally showed me an image of himself licking a piece of cardboard. Like, ew, <laughs> it tastes like cardboard. That's boring. Like, mm-hmm. don't be like cardboard is what he's saying. But really what he means is, like, don't be afraid to still have your personality. And, and laughter itself is... Daniela, he wanted to build on something that you were saying, too. When you're able to kind of revisit something and laugh at it instead of go, oh, shit, my life is over, you know, and react that way, when you can go back and laugh at something, he says, you you release its grip on you. Like, he mm-hmm. talks about this a lot. Like, when you revisit things and you're in a different state um, and you're at a higher state, higher vibration, whether it's in a, a comic sense or – whatever it might be, or like love and grace, then you, it's not about you letting go. He's like, fuck that. It's about you revisiting it in a new vibrational awareness where it can't hold on to you anymore. So it's like we have it backwards. So he's saying like it's it's very powerful and effective when we can look back and laugh at something or revisit it and rework the way we sort of like react to it or approach it. So laughing is huge. Being able to be lighthearted, he says, and, like, not take everything so fucking serious, he says, is huge. Because if you do take it it too serious, you're not in the heart space. You're not going to expand. And and laughter, comedy, and, and like, reality and truth, he says, is a part of that. Like, being real about shit. He's like, again, Lisa, he's going back to you, like, People have such an unrealistic idea of what being spiritual means. Like, oh, it means you're perfect all the time. It means you're happy all the time, and you're at peace all the time, and you never get. Wait, wait, wait. Have you, have you ever have you ever seen the YouTube by J P Sears S E A R S J P no, Sears? He he I has have. a really is that are you uh, saying that Daniela? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, he's so funny. Have you seen the one, the guide to being the ultimate spiritual person or whatever? Yeah. And it's so <laughs> funny. Somebody, he's talking all this spiritual stuff while he's on the steps, and then somebody brushes against him accidentally going down the steps, and he goes, oh, he's so unconscious, you know? Yeah. So funny. <laughs> but, uh, well, yeah, but, uh, uh, Daniela, do you offer any services? Do you want to share, like, a website or uh, well, um, your Instagram is probably what Sassy Mantras. Sassy right? Mantras, yeah, just all one word. Okay. Sassy Mantras. Uh, right okay. now, I don't, but I'm actually working on that now. I'm hoping to um, start to do uh, tarot readings, and there will be a website up and running. And um, 
but I don't know how long that'll take. Maybe another couple months. And, uh, that'll be well, let me know. Let me know, and yeah, I'll totally. announce that to everybody. What other okay. last words do you want to say to the CE peeps? Uh, me? Yeah, you. Sorry. Uh, yeah, just yeah, just building on um, what Eric was saying about the whole personality thing. I think, and he said we kind of have a backwards. And what I everyone's just so afraid of the ego, and they feel like if they're not being zen, and if uh, if they're if they're laughing at something or making a joke or you know being crass, then they're living in their ego. And everyone just has this thing where they kind of want to. Not everyone, but I, I I come across a lot of people who are just so hell bent on like destroying it. And I just, I kind of, I kind of want to pull away from that. I like my intention with, with my videos is just, just being okay with being human. There's a lot of, I've, I've had a, a few people even tell me, you know, well, you can't be that spiritual if you're making jokes about it. And it's like, mm, try again. Well, they say that about um, Eric too. Oh, he can't be very <laughs> spiritual because he curses. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and that's yeah. the thing, right? Um, spirituality is loving everything because everything is, is a part of it. That's um, right. So if you're if you're denouncing or if you're rejecting something, um, then there's something else that there. You kind of have to change your perspective and look at it from a, you know, from look 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 at it um, how it kind of impacts the whole. If that makes sense. That's right. Ooh, I like that. It's like everything is part of all that is, and if you reject any part of that, you're rejecting a part of all that is. You're rejecting God. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, and, if you want to dis- and yourself yeah. and your neighbor and so on, because we're all part and po- uh, part and whole of the uh, of, of source. Totally. That That's sounds true. great. Well, thank you for coming on. Just hang on because you might want to interject when we talk to callers. Oh. <laughs> uh, Eric, are you ready to take callers? He's just rubbing his hands together. He's like, "Let's do it, Mom." <laughs> All right. So, uh, shout out to LiveParanormal dot com. So grateful to you to allow us to have this radio show on your station. And uh, I also right. want to give my heartfelt uh, condolences to the producer Rob, who lost his dog Rudy here recently, and it really has been, of course, difficult. So, Aww. my heart's out to him. And I'm sure uh, Eric has probably got a new pet up there he's playing with. So. Aww. He's just smiling. He's not saying a whole lot. He's just real, just like you said, Daniela. He's been real, um, almost like elusive or just kind of here and there. He's been, but when he, but it's interesting because when he feels a little lofty and then comes back in, he comes back in so intense that it just, when you think you've heard it all or felt it all and you can't be expanded much more i mean he comes in and just flips your world upside down with a new concept and you're like oh my god so he's been i think eric himself has been just evolving and expanding ascending into a higher state of awareness and evolution and then when he grounds back down into us and shares it's an experience that just you know kind of blows your mind literally i mean you just get he's he's i mean god there was a concept that he shared last week and he was like, you know, not to get off the topic, but just, he said, he said, just imagine this. You think you're the channeler, but what if I told you you were being channeled? And then he flipped it completely and was wow. talking about spirit channeling humans and what that's like and so on and so on. And so I was Whoa. like, no, wait a minute. Like that left me so freaking speechless for a week. I'm like, oh, I got to sit with this. What? <laughs> so... <laughs> He's interest. He's he's just interestingly um, evolving. So I, I I know what you're saying, Danielle, when you're like, yeah, he's been kind of quiet lately, but when he comes around, he still like freaking flips your world upside down in a good way. So he's he's like he's just smiling, kind of like with that feel, like I'm here and I have a ton of information to share. Are you ready? Like that kind of feel. So, okay. All right. Okay. We'll let you get on your soapbox. First, we're going to take – uh, by the way, once I plug a, a caller in, I'm going to mute myself because, you know, everybody seems to hear my chair wiggling and, I don't know, it might be a dog starts barking or whatever. So uh, you guys did not like that background noise, so I will do that, but I will still <laughs> listen. All right, let's take one from somebody from the 210 area code. Hi there. How are you doing? Welcome to the show. Hello. Hello, Dr. Hey. Mejus. Hey. Hi, how are you? How are you doing? 
Good. Yeah, good. Great. Um, first of all, I just want to uh, send out my my thoughts and prayers for the people of Houston. I I grew up in Spring Branch, and I I uh, oh, hung out in the Memorial area. Yeah. God, so I, I went to Benwood Elementary School and and what is it? Uh, Memorial Junior High. Yeah, I, I, I went to Springwood High School. So I oh, mean, yeah. I, I subbed. I was a substitute teacher at in uh, Memorial Middle School. So back in 2004. So maybe I came across uh, Eric. If he was in middle school during that time, but uh, uh-huh. I uh, so I I just had a, a, a quick question. Um, my my wife is uh, having some lower back pain, and I just kind of trying to figure out what's the best approach and uh, through a spiritual perspective of how to maybe help her heal, you know, herself. And yeah. I've been I've been I've been listening a lot to Abraham Hicks, and so I feel like Eric has led me there to Abraham. And oh, so cool. um, I'm very grateful for that. And I, I, I like the last person I was talking that um, Eric is not a selfish person. He, he He's willing to um, help others through giving us a new insight of, of spirituality. So I'm really grateful for that. But, but yeah, I'm just wondering if, okay. uh, if there's any reason for my wife. Yeah, there's a couple things that he's saying. Um, what is your wife's first name, if you don't mind? If you do mind, don't worry about it. He's still offering information. Jenny? Jenny, okay. Um, there's a, so as you're talking, there's a few things that he is is um, suggesting for her, and then he'll kind of build on that in a second. But the first thing that he wants Jenny to do is if she can think back, and, and this is hard for some people, but precision isn't really the key here, okay? Just follow me for a minute. He says to have her think back to, like, the first time. I don't know if there was a traumatic event or a certain time where she remembers, like, all of a sudden, like, holy cow, this back pain. Um, Because there's an attachment. Obviously, that's why things manifest. Um, there's, There's an attachment, he says, energetically. But it's like she needs to revisit that event because it's the emotional attachment to that event that is lingering and manifesting as this back pain. So he's like, now you can. There's many ways that you could do this. You could do this in a meditation, in like a um, oh gosh, hypnosis session, um, or he says, if you want, if she's capable, meaning like quiet enough in the headspace, she can go into her own meditation and just shift her her focus. Okay, consciousness is really what he's saying, but sometimes that's hard for people to wrap their head around. Shift her focus to where. I know this is going to sound crazy, he says, but mm-hmm. to have her imagine, like, her, like, seeing the world from her low back perspective, like, like that's where her consciousness is. You see what I mean? So instead of, like, okay. I'm up here, I'm in the headspace, and I'm operating this body, go into, like, all of that sort of um, presence and awareness. Put that into the low back. That's, like, shifting your consciousness is what he's saying. For her, into the low back so that she can understand what this connection is tied to. Because it's not even, I asked him, if I said, do you want to get into, like, anatomical structures or anything like that? And he's like, no, 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 because I feel like she's got multiple things going on that are manifesting. It's like one after another, one thing, um, oh, gosh, what's the word I'm looking for? Affecting another or perpetuating just more and more. So I wouldn't be surprised if she has, like, muscle spasms and pinched nerves and um, maybe out of alignment. So there's multiple things occurring, but it's it's not because of, like, um, poor structure or anything like that. It, obviously, we go back to the, the the energy, okay? So when we look at this, and he goes, my mom knows all about this. Um, it's, it's, it's who you are, what you believe, what you're attached to that creates what you freaking are, he says. <laughs> so it is what you, what you believe you are, you are, what you believe believe you are you are he just keeps saying that so for her um if you believe your back pain your back pain if you believe you're limited because of your back pain you're limited so she needs to kind of readdress that and i know it's hard because you go well god dang it the pain is so loud i'm in so much pain but you have i know this it just takes um okay he's giving me so much energy without words it takes diligence no that's not the right word Devotion, that's better. It fits better. Okay, so he says it takes devotion to connect to this 
but with setting the pain aside. She has to be able to move through the pain and be willing to connect to the energy of this and where it's coming from. To me, it feels like an ill connection with a female um, in her life, like sister, cousin, friend, coworker. There's some sort of emotional attachment there. That mother-in-law, was, uh, mother-in-law, yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> But, yeah. but uh, what about Eric? What about the Grinberg method of body work? Those are uh, people who do uh, to, that work on your body using the Grinberg technique can really help you, uh, you know, through your body work through some of the stuff that's going on in your life. I don't totally understand it, but I had a session courtesy of my sister in LA, and it was awesome. This is okay. what he says. Um, he says it's effective, but it's like a temporary fix because it's a matter of time before that ball of energy kind of catches up again to like, or becomes aware of itself and then manifests again. So she has to be willing to look at how she's carrying that attachment energetically and then release it. Because if, if we just do physical fixes without like spiritual, mental, if we don't do mind, body and soul all equally it's just going to continue to show up and pop up like hey here i am again he says so for her i think it's um you know just to be a little more direct with her have her look at in the past um female relationships where she felt betrayed and then she um kind of attached to and connected to that disappointment because i feel like that's where this is manifesting um and then, again, it's it's all root chakra related, so she's going to need to work through that attachment to help separate from that um, that manifestation. It's the biology, he says, the biology of what she believes in for herself. She, it's it's a lot. She's carrying a lot of emotional attachment. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, well, thank, you. thank you so much, you guys. Are, you know, that's really accurate, but thank you so much. I'll watch this high. So thank you guys so much. Oh, hi. You're welcome. Another high back. Thank you so much for calling in. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Okay. Let's take somebody from the 3300 area code. Hi there. How are you? What's your name? Uh, first name, at least. Oh. And where are you calling from? Hi. Yes. Um, I'm happy that I've gotten through again. This is Kiki. I spoke to y'all all a while back. Okay. <clears throat> and, hi, Kiki. Um, hi. And um, I'm calling today because I wanted to um, gauge Eric's um, thoughts on a decision I made. I I have effectively left a line of work that I've been doing that has been basically sucking the life out of me in the corporate setting. Um, yeah, I decided to talk. choose me. Hmm? Oh, sorry. He's he He likes you, and he is talking. Sorry. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> you left a line of work. I, Yes, and I decided to choose me. Last time, Eric told me to have confidence in myself, to believe in myself, and to know basically that I can do it. And and um, and hearing that and and just kind of letting that resonate with me, I said that it's time for me to choose me and to figure out just something, a different path, you know, to t- choose a path from the crossroads I had been in. So now, as you can imagine, there's quite a bit of uncertainty, not knowing what, um, you know, God's source will lead me down. Um, But I wanted to let him know that and to just kind of see what his thoughts are for me. Sure. This is what he's, I mean, as as soon as you started talking, this is what he showed (laughs) me, an image of you leaving something behind, like making this change, leaving something behind, and then stopping. Like, okay, I made this decision. Here I am. Now where do I go? So mm-hmm. um, it's the, it's uh, it's the feeling of being amidst that change and going, okay, here I am. This is happening. This is real. But keeping that flow going, because he's like you're 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 sort of stopping and reflecting. Oh, I hate to say it like that. He's like you're you're stopping and reflecting too much. So it's hard to pass that along because it's it can easily confuse you with you know stay in the present. You want you need to stay present. Um, so it's important to be mindful. But when you look in the past and go, okay, I just made this change. I took this leap. Now what? Um, stay present with the energy of why you took this leap. 
Like that's what mm-hmm. that like that's where the bottom is falling out. He says, why you made this change? Why you took this leap? Because that way you can because that's where your passion will surface or resurface. So and he says to tell you too when we when we, when you said um, uh, something about along the lines of like what God has in store for me or what the path is for me. Mm-hmm. Um, this is his response, and you know he's a smart ass, and he's not trying to be mean, but he goes. You know you make your own path, right? He goes, you know that, right? Yes. And he's like yes. trying to get you like, you know that, right? He just keeps saying it in that tone. So I think for okay. you in the energy that you're in and the position that you're in, the guidance from Eric is to to look at and feel out what you are passionate about and follow that mm-hmm. because that, like, yeah, yeah, there's a path already there for that, he says, and follow that path. But it's more it's more along the lines of, like, when you align with it, you're in it. You're in that path. It's not about, like, it's not always about creating the path. It's just mm-hmm. letting the path live through you. Like, you see what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's um, a different perspective because a lot of times people get on this kick of, like, create mm-hmm. your own path. Yeah, that's great, he says. <laughs> and he mm-hmm. says it just like that. That's great. Right. But instead... Let the path live through you. Like il- let let it illuminate through you. Give it life. So I think for you, it's about though you need to strengthen your voice. Like you're you're very insecure with your voice and sharing who you are. He says, mm-hmm. um, and communicating like your ideas or your aspirations mm-hmm. and and um, and dreams and goals and that sort of thing. So mm-hmm. the more you speak it, the more you speak it into existence. So you need to get a little mm-hmm. bit stronger with that. And then how? Says, on Facebook? I mean, how does she, what does she do to, mm-hmm. uh, on what platform should she yeah. sing her song, he so to not, speak? He says it's not really mm-hmm. even just like um, a platform, but it's more, mm-hmm. it's more like just fully embracing it. Be, like being able to, it's almost a feeling of like coming out of the closet. So I'm not quite sure what it is that you're passionate about or getting into, but it's kind of like mm-hmm. revealing this whole new side of yourself and being able to mm-hmm. fully embody that and embrace it and share it. So, so talk about it with it family. Is, Should she talk about it with family and yeah. friends and post about it on Facebook and just like get it, out, get herself out there? Mm-hmm. Exactly, mm-hmm. because it's like before, he goes, before I can even coach you on what to do, where to do, when to do, Mm-hmm. you have to be completely embodying it, and then you begin to share it. Because you can't share it if you don't have it, right, he says. So you have to be able to embody it, whatever it is, before you can share it. So he's trying to get you in that mm-hmm. space of fully embracing who you are and the change that you made. Um, because it's kind of like someone going like, okay, I'm tired of being a banker. I'm going to be a teacher. Mm-hmm. So you leave the banker job, and you're like, okay, crap. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to be a teacher. So, and like, there's this feeling of hesitancy. So don't hesitate mm-hmm. in trusting the decisions that you made, but let the path, like, mm-hmm. live through you. Give it life by letting it live through you. So okay. it's like whatever you feel called to do, whatever you feel inspired while you're doing it, mm-hmm. you're giving life. Like, let it flow through you. It's it's hard to put into words, but it's, he's literally showing you just lining up with the rhythm of the universe, which sometimes people mm-hmm. call like synchronicities and stuff, but letting mm-hmm. it flow through you. Um, mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter. He's like, it doesn't matter what people think and their ability to adjust or accept. Like when you mm-hmm. do you and do what, what you're passionate about the best you can, mm-hmm. um, you have no choice but to succeed. You're going to succeed in mm-hmm. that because of course. you're doing you and you're being passionate in it. It's... it's okay. um, uh, it's hard to explain. He he likes to talk to you about this because he feels like he relates like, to you. It sounds yeah. like uh, Eric needs to have a, a longer session with Kiki. So you know, maybe you should do, consider that. But uh, I hope what yes, he's given you, sure. at least for this short period of time, has helped you. Yes, yeah, yes, I hope. it has. And I'll take the time to kind of, um, you know, go into self-introspection and, and I will report back in a month or so on how I'm doing and the decision I've made, I really am thankful. Oh, awesome. awesome. Just good luck to you, Kiki. Thank Take care. Thank you so much, Alicia. Thank you. Thank oh. you. Bye. 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 Okay, we got one from the 601 area code. Hi there. How are you doing? 
Okay, I'm great. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes, what's your first name? You. And where are you calling from? Right, hey, this, um, this is Vanessa. Vanessa, hey. hi. Oh, hi. Okay, so um, uh, I have my question because it's kind of involved. So can you hear me okay? Oh, it's a little oh. hard. Can you, can you say that Yeah, again? it is hard to hear you. Okay, is that better? Yep. There All we right. go. So what I'm calling about is my husband in- invented a water control structure that's for improving water quality and mm. make it um, – we built a business around it, and it didn't. He's applied for a patent, and it just like couldn't. It's it's actually controlling our lives. I feel like, but we're trying to get this business off the ground, and it just is a. It's a great thing for the environment. Um, it's to help farmers to control nitrogen runoff and to help uh, municipalities control wastewater runoff and and also for wildlife and some other um, other other applications. I'm just wondering if Eric sees anything. If it looks like we'll get the patent, if it looks like this business is going to take off, because I feel like it's so good for the environment and it will make it easier to manage um water in a in a more efficient and um and have a, a better quality water leaving um farms and municipalities and and other things so okay just um, there's a there's a few things here um okay yeah this is going to go a whole different direction um uh yeah, well, okay, so i got to get him to talk about this water thing. Um, okay, let's talk about that first. So first of all, he's showing it's the approach. He says, you know how you feel when you talk about the effects of your water system? Mm-hmm. Stay in that energy and use that as your approach. So, for example, because everything you know is is an energetic transaction. So when you look at the benefits – and, and kind of like put yourself in the aftermath of your 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 system already being in place. Put yourself in the aftermath, and it's the feeling of this is effective. This is, you know, um, um, green. I don't know what you want to call it. It's good for the yeah, environment. Yeah. You know? So it's it's that's the energy flow that you need to be in when you approach any sort of paperwork or communications regarding this patent regarding this like uh, putting this system in place because right now you guys are approaching it like a monster like it's a monster hanging over you like um, yeah this monkey on your back that you just can't get off of you so you need to approach it with a different energy and and that that will then allow that energy to flow and be understood because I feel like there's a there's definitely a dynamic of it being misunderstood because again every okay. and, and he says it could be he says to remember that there is a conscious and there's a subconscious aspect to everything so with this water system I feel like it right now because of the energy transaction the type of energy it's in it's being misunderstood so once you get to that place of like go into the emotional reality that it already exists it's already being utilized and the the benefits are fantastic right so you go into that right. and you're like oh this is great this, so stay in that emotional awareness and then that sort of unlocks the doors that's the key that unlocks the doors to keep it flowing okay, okay. that's his advice for the water system now, this whole other thing, um, i got to be brief with this because we're on the radio show, but um, who's the mother figure for you who's passed? There's a mother figure that's, like, trying to come in, like, that I can't Judy. even. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Um, My mother, Judy. Okay, is your mother passed? Yes. Yeah, okay, because that's where Eric would rather talk to you. <laughs> Um, he's really? like, yeah, yeah, let's let's address this water system because that's a question, but her mom's here. Like, there's a mom here. Okay, now I'm going to go into this for just a brief second because Eric is so pressing with it. Um, was your mom unable to communicate to you before she passed or unable to say goodbye um, or eat? There's something with the oral energy that's blocked, so it's either she couldn't say goodbye, couldn't eat, or speak before she passed. Do you understand well, that? Well, she had, she had, yes, yeah, she was very Okay. Sick. Okay, so... Know that this is Eric just bringing her forward to show you that she's at peace. 
Uh, but I also, see, I also feel like she needs to say thank you for being nurtured. Like I'm not sure who took care of her or how she was nurtured, but there's so much that she's trying to acknowledge in regards to her health, um, mm-hmm. like mobility being affected, um, independence and dignity. So she's saying thank you for all of these things, for upholding her dignity mm-hmm. um, and nurturing her. Like this, um, again, I feel like she needs this closure and she needs to offer this closure to her family and saying thank you um, for the way that she was nurtured. Then I also real quick have to ask, is there someone named Ashley or is there like an A initial, like Ashlyn, Ashley, Alexander, like an A-L sound in the family? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh Um, Whoever that is, your mom is just showing presence with her. She's just trying to make a connection, bring your awareness to that person, and she's validating her presence with that person as well. Okay. Um, oh, I'll bet you. I did, I, sorry that like that never happens, but sometimes it does. That and never does. Oh, yeah, but no. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's, that's your mom. Funny. Maybe a, maybe this is another case where we you need a longer session with Kim or one of the other yeah. mediums. It sounds like Eric has a, and your mother have a lot to say. Yeah. So yeah, she I'm definitely, definitely like getting. I'm going to be making She definitely an pushed her way through so that she could at least let you know that she she can push through because she's at peace. She's comfortable. That's um, awesome. And she Good. needs you to know that. So. Oh, I, I love her very much, and she's Aww. very missed. And we think of her all the time. And thank you, Eric. God, I mean, this is just evidence that, um, you You're know, that, that this is all just it's so wonderfully orchestrated. Thank you so much. And I'll be making an Aww. appointment for sure. <laughs> You're so welcome. I'm going to be in New Orleans. I've already bought a ticket for New Orleans, so I'll see you there. Oh, Oh, awesome. And we can connect there. Good deal. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. All right. Thanks for calling. All right, bye. Bye Bye-bye. That was awesome. All right, now we're going to take somebody from the 760 area code. Hi there. What's up? Hello. Hi. 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 My name is Mike, and um, I'm a male. I just want to say hi, hi, Elisa, and hi, Kim. Hi. And, um, How are you doing? Hi. I'm Eric's doing fine. And um, happy belated birthday to Eric too. Aww. <laughs> I already I already sent him a, a birthday on Facebook, but I'll send him again. <laughs> That's sweet. Aww. But I I just had I just had two little questions. I don't want to be greedy, but okay. Um, if there are too many questions, just pick. Uh, Eric can yeah, just answer whatever. It's usually, it's whatever usually we wants. just uh, pick one question. Per okay. Person. Well, I'll just I'll just read them, and and he he can pick pick what he wants. Oh, that's I, a good just, idea. Yeah, I'm just curious about my past life and my life contract, or what my life contract is now, if I have one. And um, I, I, anything good in the future with my twin soul, who I have known for at least 20 years. Wow. So he can pick out of that. Okay. <laughs> First thing he says, um, and he's, he's like tugging on his earlobe, so that's his way of saying for everybody to listen up. He says past lives are important sometimes if they haven't been transcended energetically. So meaning okay. if there, there are patterns that you've, sort of exhausted, you know, in discovering, like, why is this pattern occurring in my life? Why does this keep happening? Then you need to look at your past lives. But other than that, you need to stay as present as possible. He's like, if if you can recognize those patterns, then you can transcend them. And most of the time, that's what we do from one life to the next. Um, sometimes they do carry over and fold into the next life, he says. So, okay. yes, of course, in this life, everybody has... He doesn't like the word contract as much because it seems so finite, he says. And Eric says, I like wiggle room. So he's trying to explain to people that a contract doesn't mean that it is absolutely set in stone 100% this way. There's always wiggle room, but we call it free will. So he says um, everybody comes into a life with um, intention, with purpose, um, and comes into an incarnation with intention and purpose, he says. So your contract, again, he doesn't like that word, but your mission, your purpose here has something to do with, like, um, 
okay, this is this is different. This is interesting. It has something to do with your sexuality or right. your self identification, your appearance, like all of that. Like how you are what do you call it? Sexually um what's the word I'm looking how for? I, how oriented, maybe? Is that the right word? How I deal how I deal with it. Like how, how I yeah. even, how I, how I deal, yeah, because I'm because I, you know, I'm a man, I'm gay. So I was just probably oh, okay. that's probably what it is. Okay, that makes sense because it's like your sexual orientation, your your identity with that, um, everything about who you are in right. relation to your gender is your mission here. It's it's like exploring yourself in this way because we've all oh. had incarnations where we have to explore this dynamic of ourselves. So he says that this life or contract, if you want to call it that, your purpose more so is to sort of like break the chains from um, old old patterns, old thoughts of the way things should be or right, could be right. because um, they are the way they are, he says. So there is right. no should be and there is no could be. Everything is just the way it is. So it's a matter of exploring that in the present and totally, <laughs> oh, this is Eric, totally fucking enjoying the hell out of it, he says. <laughs> So okay. whatever that means to you, enjoy the okay. hell out of who you are and what you're experiencing in this life as a man. Now, when it when we look at soulmates, you ask some kind of question about like a soulmate or a twin flame, twin partner. I, I uh, have a twin soul, yes. Okay, this is something he's telling you to loosen up on. He, he keeps saying loosen up, loosen up, loosen up a little bit, loosen right. up. What he means right. is um, we all have like, you know, a tiny, small handful of people that we really connect with. But right. he says when you go up, meaning vibrationally, you can get into that space with anybody. You can get into that, like, inner core, intimate space with anybody and feel that soul-to-soul connection. But it requires a high vibration to do so. So he's saying to remember for everybody listening, too, there are twin flames, there are soulmates, but really when you're in a high vibrational awareness you are and become and see yourself as a soulmate with anyone and everyone. He goes, okay. yeah, yeah, I know. That's a hard, that's a tough pill to swallow. He goes, but here's an extra glass of water. <laughs> swallow that pill. <laughs> so I hope that helps you. But he says, um, I think you're, he wants you to not focus so much on your past, like past lives and even past in this life. He needs you, he's like telling you to focus more on being present and who you are right now and embrace that because it seems like you're on this road of having a lot of fun with who you are. I don't know if that's experienced yet, but it's very, very near, um, very strong so in your aura. Things, so, no. good, so good things are coming. Um, good. Yes, he's showing you being like completely surrounded with like when you're present, you're going to have so much fun with who you are. So okay. good things, now. Yeah, get it yeah, now. Maybe start taking, now. What about meditating? Start, uh, you know, mindfulness classes or just mindfulness meditations, et cetera, to, to help learn yeah. how to let be me, the Let me ask you this, Mike. Are you struggling with, like, your identity somehow? Um, a little a little bit. I, I don't feel, um, I don't know, I don't feel so comfortable sometimes. Yeah, okay. Because when Elisa said mindfulness, he said, um, Eric said he wants you to practice that with like your sexuality. So right. Um, right. it's that's why I ask if you're like uncomfortable with your identity or something. He wants you to practice mindfulness with your sexuality because um, when you fully embrace that, that's when you're going to like explode and have a ton of fun with who you are. And that's in the now. That's it's awesome. not a could be thing. It's not a should be. It's it's a now thing. So right. he's excited right. for you. He's like, have fun with who you are because who you are is a lot of fun. He likes you. Okay. That's awesome. Well, Mike, okay. I hope that helps you. Yeah, it helps a lot. That's Good. awesome. Well, thank you for thank you for calling in. Oh, okay. Thanks. Uh, thanks, uh, everybody. Thanks. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks to you, Eric. Oh, so, you're welcome. Sassy okay. Montrose, are you still on the line? I am. Hi. <laughs> Hi. It says I've got the last caller. The last <laughs> caller would probably be benefited by. Putting some humor into his life, uh, and, and and that will help him have more fun. Yeah, we need to play more. Just because we grow up doesn't mean we have to stop playing. 
know. I yeah, no just... kidding. <laughs> Yeah. And then isn't it sad how we get ridiculed for, like, doing things just for the fun of it? People are like, why are you going I to a concert? Know. I'm like, it's fun. <laughs> People are like, you're a mom. Yeah? yeah can we play tag in the, in, the, in the restaurant? What's what's up with that? I think they should do a tag on their life skit of, of grown-ups, like, acting like kids, getting up on the table in the restaurant and doing silly stuff like that. So, Daniela, i.e. Sassy Montrose. I think it'd be fun to have you on the show when you have your tar- uh, tarot thing up and going. Oh, Maybe man. you could teach us a little bit about that. Yeah, oh, that'd, that'd be so cool. much fun. Yeah, let's do the it. Audience is open to it. Yeah, I'm open to it. Oh, of course. <laughs> if we not, can play we will with tarot. open them. We will open them <laughs> ourselves. Well, thank you, everybody, and thank you, Live Paranormal. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Daniela. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Of course, I love you so much. Thank I you, guys. Thank you so much. And, um, yeah, thanks, everybody. Love you, love you, too. Have a good night, guys. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. Thank you, Daniela, for coming on the show. Yes, thank you, so thank much you for Daniela. I appreciate it so much. Go, yeah, go subscribe to her channel, people. Sassy <laughs> Montrose. And her Instagram. Good night, guys. Bye-bye.